bold story never before told on the screen. That's right. My baby is black. My from 1961. Baby we don't is know, black. We don't know much about this film. Some mm -hmm. kind of uh, exploitation film, I guess. I think, but then I think they take it the other way. I'm not sure. It's uh, it's back in the days where uh, you know I think uh, racial insensitivity was running rampant. Right, right. So yeah, it could be one of those uh, little exploitation movies teaching people um, what not to hook up with people of other uh, uh, backgrounds. Just teaching people <laughs> Stay about with your own kind, and also teaching people about blacks in general. Yeah. For example, this next clip: uh, class watching an educational film. Social workers talk about. Uh, uh, civilizing black kids. All right. We're gonna play the new clips for the the hardcore listeners that have heard the first few here. But we gotta get everyone up to speed. So hang in there. Hello there. Have a bonbon. They're like puppies. You train them with candy. Here. What can you do? They're more polite to strangers than to us, and we do everything for them. Quite discouraging. How long have you been in social work? Not long enough to understand them. Not even a smile from you, Jamal. Not a bit of gratitude. We try to help civilize them. We give them decent houses so they can live like people, not animals. Oh. Give them real houses and they make pigsties out of them. They live with their lice and their dirt. No. Believe me, mister, I know them well. I've tried everything, threats and kindness. Nothing works against their stubbornness, their laziness. Besides, they're sneaky and liars. Miserable. They should be isolated and disinfected, too. Believe me, sir. Discipline is important. A strong hand would do them much good. I heard that conversation over my fence uh, just <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's a wow. You have to disinfect, disinfect them, them. You give them houses. Where the hell did would they just pull one out of the jungle somewhere? And and a strong hand does a lot of good. That's right. Oh, oh, smack them oh, around yeah. a little bit. They had the greatest racist white lady voices in those days. Oh yeah. yeah. Who is that woman? I want to know. Oh, she was just despicable with that voice of hers. She could have easily been on Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Just change her dialogue around. It's the same lady. It's almost like when she's talking, she's like speaking like from the essence of the way blacks were treated. Like that's how all white people talk back then. Yep. It seems. Yeah. We people just talk in very clipped tones, and you just knew if you had melanin, you were finished. Oh well, let me tell you, I believe that they should be kept in one area and not mingle with the rest of the white people. <laughs> yeah, they kind of they had no idea how to talk on film or <laughs> tape or anything. I'm sure they talk normally. Did they just talk like this? Kind of just, hey, how you doing? Yeah. In real life? And then a, all right, in a three, microphone gets two, in front of them. two, one, we're rolling. I don't believe they should ever have uh, children with white people. <laughs> have a Lucky Strike cigarette, won't you? They're wonderful. Smooth and cool on the throat. Cut. Very good. Uh, how was that? Good? That, yeah, that was good. Well, right, we, we should try it again. No, let's try one more. No, I got a black chick I got to go out with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next clip. Professor discusses film during Talk About Color lecture. Talk About Color. Unfortunate, <laughs> but that's the way most people think today. Sounds like or Plan 9 African, from Outer Space. The Negro. And, oh, yeah, this is the... This African, is the, the, the Negro. Negro. I forgot about this. The Negro. African. So I guess the professor, I guess they were playing that film. That yeah. you heard with the lady doing the weird voice, and then the professor comes on to to discuss what they just saw. How how ridiculous it is! I think they were trying to um, get a little racial sensitivity here. So the professor, <laughs> says, how ridiculous <laughs> this was! <laughs> this woman has maybe a couple of issues that need to be addressed. You know what? It's it's that old gag though. Get the professor. To show how ridiculous it is. Yeah. So you could actually show this exploitation to people. Yeah. It's kind of like the modern day talk show, like Maury. It's like, it's still a freak show, but you get the expert on yeah, and it to make it all good and uh, legit. legit. Right, right. Unfortunate. But that's the way most people think today. For them, the African, the Negro, can never be anything but inferior. It is useless to tell these people otherwise. Is this the philosophy lecture? No, it's a talk about color. <laughs> we have just seen a... <laughs> no, it's a talk about colored. 
Wow. Wait, I need a uh, Negro. Negro. For my instant replay. That's yeah, African. The Negro. To talk about color. We have just seen a story on the Arab, who is a white man. Comprehend really? me. Practically speaking, we could equally well have used any racial minority as victims. The yellow race, for example. <laughs> the yellow peril. Unfortunately, racism is a leper, gaining more ground every day, and as such, should be dealt with seriously and intelligently. Is anyone race on Earth superior? Hmm? This guy is really full of doom and gloom. He really is. It's growing. It's a leper. Growing every day. Oof. He is a creep. <laughs> what a how ghoul. About, how about putting a positive spin on it, fella? <laughs> yeah. Times they are a-changing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. This is the 60s, man. Chill yeah. Out. Come on. Some good things are about to happen. But I killed Joy. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> the yellow peril. Probably goes home and talks to his kids like that. About their homework. and It's like holding a 20-year grudge. <laughs> The yellow peril. <laughs> the yellow peril. The Asians. The Japs. <laughs> and he likes the Arabs. Yeah. They're white people. Are they? They're wait. Wait a few years there, Pally. <laughs> wait till you see what they turn into. The, the new Negroes. Negro. <laughs> the Arab. The new Negro. A savage who will strap dynamite to his body and blow up innocent people. We have time for one more before the break here. Oh, if we only do one, we'll never get back to it. No, I promise. The yellow, we have to do it today. The yellow peril. They put MSG in your food, <laughs> and you wind up sitting so long, you get up, there's that ring on the back of your legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the other one oh. that we played, and then we'll get to all the new clips after the break. White for an ass black man about shaving. All right. Why, a black man shaves differently than a white man? Apparently they get to some called razor bumps. Ask yes, girl. I'll tell you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I wonder why you shave like that. You don't have any... I <laughs> wonder why you shave like that. Why do you shave like that? <laughs> it's once again, the, the camera turns on. Yeah. Why do you shave like that? I wonder. I am Rock Quarry. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We thought this guy sounded like Rock Quarry from the Flintstones. <laughs> you might remember me from the gunfight at the OK Rock Corral. Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> I am Rock Quarry. Ah. ah. That is from my movie, Dr. Jekyll's Hyde. Ah. I'll just be Gus Schultz. Gas station attendant. Hmm. I miss Holly Rock. My fans, the adulation. <laughs> the same voice. <laughs> That's, why do you shave like that? You're a oh, Negro. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I wonder why you shave like that. You don't have any more beard than a hen's egg. Right. It's a stupid habit. Why do you say that? Because, anyway, I prefer looking like this to looking like, to looking like the good Negro. Which one is that? Well, the one who shines <laughs> shoes. The one who is always so polite. The one who always says thank you whenever he gets his tips. Oh, boy. This this one's a bit... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> He's um, a little uh, advanced. <coughs> He's a little, you know... <coughs> <laughs> this one might have to be... <coughs> <coughs> it's 1961, for God's sake. <coughs> He certainly is, uh, has some advanced thinking, doesn't he? <laughs> harumph, harumph. I don't want to be like the good Negro. They all talk like Master Poe. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, why do you shave like that? And um, the black guy wanted to shave. Well, he didn't want to look like uh, like a shoe shine black. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to look like a businessman black. Upwardly mobile. And he uh, he understands that people make opinions real fast just on the because of the color of his skin. So uh -huh. he figured he could help uh, help that along a little bit if he kept clean shaven at all times. He didn't want an Uncle Remus beard. Right, right, right. 